this is a story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Citizen, communist, counter-spy. And who has now revealed for the first time his secret files concerning not only his own activities, but also the current activities of other counter-espionage agents. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. The Communist Party will go to almost any lengths to protect a secret member's identification with the party, even if it means sacrificing a lesser communist. Herbert Philbrick brings you the story of the counter-spy who is asked to make this sacrifice. Schedule, Philbrick. That's how the comrades like it. has the key he came here to get. There's nothing to keep you here. Certainly not the company. This key will get you the comrade's bag, Philbrick, and all the old newspapers it's stuffed with. He picks up the one you brought and the hundred thousand dollars inside it. <laughs> hurry, comrade, hurry. The plane for Mexico is just about to leave. The party wants you on it with that hundred thousand. And Special Agent Jerry Dressler of the FBI has more than a little interest in that bag full of money. work, Herb. That's it, the payoff. That's all there is, all there can be. Don't 
bother going in the house, comrade. Grant wants to talk to you. Look, I've been Grant's errand boy the better part of the day as it is. Shall I report that our rising young advertising executive is too busy to take orders from the party? Never mind, comrade. And never mind the sarcasm, either. You know what happened at the airport? Yes. The police intercepted Cummins. There was nothing I could do. We followed instructions to the letter. Well, how could it have happened? How? Well, I suspect that Cummins made a mistake. He started to run. There were police, according to the report I got. Yes, there were police watching the gate. Whether they were watching Cummins, too, is hard to say. But when he started to run, it was all over. Cummins is a fool. Worst kind, an undisciplined fool. Cost the party a great deal of money to find that out. I gave Cummins that assignment, comrade. Are you critical of my choice? Aren't you? Very. But I didn't send for you to listen to a confession. Naturally not. But I don't see that there's anything we can do about it. The police have both Cummins and the money. And they raided Colonel Paxton's office not five minutes after you left there with the money. So now they have all the records, the telephone lists, everything. It was a beautiful dream we had, comrade. A magnificent cause that no one could attack. A string of low-cost youth hostels along the mountain trails. Mm. And with Colonel Paxton, the friend of youth, to front for us, we were raking in $10,000 a week. Until the papers started sniping at us. Yeah. That was a calculated risk we had to take, comrade. That someday, someone would figure out who was behind Colonel Paxton and his fundraising campaigns. That's what I told the Colonel, in essence. But he doesn't agree with us. He's demanding a revision. What do you mean? Sit down. This is going to be bad news. This is party policy, comrade. It's all been determined and there's no appeal. Colonel Paxton is too valuable to the party. He must be protected in this situation. His reputation as an anti-communist must be preserved. That's a neat trick under the circumstances. How does he propose to do it? At about 2.30 tomorrow, the Colonel will hold a press conference. He'll say he was duped by secret communists who infiltrated his organization. That's a pretty tired story. He's not going to get much space with that. I think he will, comrade. He's going to name the leader of the secret communists and document his membership. You said this was going to be bad news for me. Yes. I'm the goat. Yes. Well, thanks for telling me. about the story, darling. And the final thrilling installment will be written at 2.30 tomorrow when that champion of youth, Colonel William Paxton, faces the press. Then it's all settled what he's going to tell them. Uh, I suppose I could be philosophical about it and say that it's the only thing he can tell them if he wants to get himself off the hook, which he does. What's more important, the party wants him off the hook. I don't see how naming you as a communist can accomplish that. Darling... We've talked about this before. There's a public tendency to, to romanticize the Communist Party in the cloak and dagger sense. Any individual who stands up and says these clever and devious rascals have deceived me is an object of pity. But Herb, it's... As a sympathetic figure, he's already on his way to becoming a hero. He's a, he's a battle-scarred veteran of the war against the Communist conspiracy. All he has to do is prove his good intentions. By naming a secret Communist? Hmm. Specifically, Herbert A. Philbrick. All the ways we've thought this could happen. There's only one thing that matters to me, Herb. I'm getting you back. What's left you're getting back? No job, no friends, 
Our kids will be social outcasts at school. We don't have to stay here and take that, Herb. We can go away, start over. I love you very much, Mrs. Philbrick, but not enough to lie to you. And I can't let you lie to yourself. I don't understand what you're saying. Up until today, I've been a secret communist. After tomorrow, I won't be secret anymore, but I'll still be a communist. Oh, boy. Will they hang on to me now? They own me in public. The FBI can't help you? Not in the sense of acknowledging me, they can't. Well, I'm going to see Jerry Dressler tonight. Maybe there's another way. Does he know what's happened, Herb? Sure. All the things you've done for them, the chances you've taken. I haven't done anything for the FBI. It's been a selfish one-way street the whole time. See, I want a free country for my kids. take after each other with meat axes to make it seem exciting to me. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this situation for you, Herb. You know as many of the answers as I do. The Bureau can't recognize you or your work publicly. Under the circumstances, we'd only make a bad situation worse if we were to leak some of the facts about Colonel Paxton to the press. Sure. sure. Paxton would start screaming libel. Yeah, not only that. The Communist Party has created clear-cut issues between you and Colonel Paxton. If he's attacked in the papers, they'd start looking for you. Yeah, there's no question about that. No question about Herbert A. Philbrick, either. He's kaput. I said no sugarcoating, Herb. You could be right. Well, we both knew it had to happen someday, didn't we, Jerry? Well, I haven't said we've given you up, either, Herb. What's the use of kidding ourselves? We know we can't muzzle Paxton. No. But we might find some way to make the communists muzzle him. Why would they do that? They worship this man. Why do the Russians have slave labor camps all over Siberia? Because there are so many traitors to the cause. So many comrades willing to sell out to the capitalistic conspiracy against the workers. You know, Herb, I have a strong feeling that if Comrade Grant were to be given enough evidence, we could sell her on the idea that Colonel Paxton is a traitor, even an FBI informer. Until one minute ago, I'd have sworn it was me. Thanks, Jerry. So long, Herb. Nothing in the papers yet. But in six hours and 22 minutes, Paxton sits down with the gentleman of the press. Time's running out awfully fast for you. Hold it, Herb. Pay a visit to Colonel Paxton. I'll ride with you. Jerry Dressler, wherever you are, hear this. We're in business. Colonel Paxton, this is Special Agent Hillman of the FBI. <laughs> Colonel, we understand you've had some difficulty with Reds infiltrating an organization you're interested in. Well, you are. You're telling everything to the press. I see. Well, Colonel, before you do, I wonder if we might have a short chat. Well, right away, if it's convenient for you. Second and Hawthorne, half an hour. Good. Hello. All right, Special Agent Hellman, you've got a date. Second and Hawthorne is planned. Roger.
I just don't understand it, comrade. I'm sorry. You'll admit, won't you, that someone on the inside of the fund organization had to leak certain information to the papers? Yeah, that's a logical assumption, all right, but... Well, who's a more logical person to give out that kind of information than Colonel Paxton himself? You may be right. I find it hard to believe, though. I worked with the man all along. I... Well... It just doesn't make sense. After information that came to us last night, I'm not interested in your opinion of Colonel Paxton. I want you to get me into that house. Into the Colonel's house? How? The Colonel isn't home. I know that. I've got Conrad Duncan following him. All you have to do is to convince the house boy that he should let us in. Yeah. Seems to me, comrade, that if Colonel Paxton were an FBI informer, he'd be more discreet about what he left around. What is it? What'd you find? Come on, drive me back to my office. of the youth hostel campaign. Has he forgotten any names? Well, I can't tell, but this would appear to be a pretty complete report. I'm going to get him up here. I want to see that FBI rat squirm when I show him these. Uh, I wouldn't do that, comrade. You wouldn't fly. What more proof do I need? Well, we're not entirely sure whom this was intended for. Maybe it wasn't the FBI at all. It could be a party higher up, a, a courier. Are you defending Paxton? You haven't forgotten that at 2.30 he has a press conference scheduled. That's a little over three hours from now. I can stop him. I should think that would be the most important thing in the world to you right now. No, it's the second most important. The party comes first. You said yourself that Paxton was a very important member. We can't afford to lose his services by making a stupid mistake. Hello? Yes, Duncan. Did you follow him? Where? Second in Hawthorne. He met a guy. They talked in a restaurant there. When they broke up, I followed the guy. Yes? Like a pigeon. Right back to FBI headquarters. Did you hear that? Does that satisfy you, comrade? I'd still like to know whom this envelope was intended for. Look. It was returned to Colonel Paxton's mailbox for a 30 cents postage due. It'll cost you just that much to find out who. Okay. I'll gamble 30 cents.
Brad Herb. It's 22 minutes to 2. How long does it take for a special to be delivered? I don't know. An hour or so, I suppose. At any rate, there's nothing we can do about it. Comrade, I don't see why you have to be so stubborn about this. I've seen enough to convince me that Paxton is an FBI stooge. Well, look at it this way. Paxton has been smart enough to work himself up pretty high in the Communist Party. At the same time, it appears he's leaking information to the FBI. Well, he figures to be a pretty smooth article. I'd, I'd hate to see him get off the hook. Hey, there's the mail train. He's stopping. she's found a party traitor. It's time you stop knocking the idea. High time if it's gonna save your neck. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, my wife went to visit her mother for a couple of days, and before she left, she sent one of my suits out to the cleaners. You know how women are. I sure do. I'm married myself. Yeah, well, she sent me a postcard and said that the suit was at some cleaner along Hilldale Avenue here. I thought maybe this was the... Okay, what's your name? I'll look it up. Uh, Herbert. Alan Herbert. Herbert. Sorry, she must have left it somewhere else. Hello. Excuse me, ma'am. Hi. The laundry just came in. I'll have it for you in a minute. I'll be 280, sir. Well, right. uh, thanks very much. You. Make this look good, Herb. Remember, Comrade Grant has to think it's taking all your willpower not to run these few steps. I just picked up the letter. He came in for some laundry. I saw the corner of the envelope under the wrapper. There he comes. Hey, that's the guy Paxton talked to. That's the guy I followed to FBI headquarters. I've seen enough. Let's go. Ah, Colonel Paxton. Who ordered this insanity? My houseboy told me you were at the house this morning while I was out. He saw you two going through my personal papers. I want some kind of an explanation, and I want it now. I want to know why this, this hoodlum of yours, Duncan, had the temerity to order me to come here. I told him to bring you here, comrade. Are you out of your mind? You know what it means if I'm seen... We don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm not going to argue with you. I'll leave that to a higher authority. Just tell me what's on your mind and make it brief. I'm due at my office right now for a press conference. Miss Anderson, are the reporters there for Colonel Paxton? They are? Hold on a minute. Your secretary, Colonel. Tell her to send the reporters away. There'll be no interview. Tell her. Poor comrade Paxton. Good, loyal communist. Lucky for you, Philbrick, that it would never occur to him to question a party order. And a little later, they may even convince him he was an FBI informer. Poor comrade Paxton. Yes. Yes. Yes, that, that's right, Miss Anderson. Outmaneuvered by the FBI, the Communist Party lost one of its most valued secret members. Next week, another story of communist activities from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, counter-spy, a man who for nine years posed as a member of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm.